Hey, what's up, guys? It's Jason with Paul Davis Restoration. Uh, I'm going to make this a quick one today. Uh, lately, we've had a lot of pushback. Uh, a lot of adjusters are coming in. They're questioning the category of loss. They're questioning methods. Uh, they're questioning the standards. And they're looking to downplay uh, a lot of the things that we do. I'm here to tell you, Stand up for yourself. Don't just assume that because someone's an insurance adjuster or they work for an insurance company, that what they say is law. Because let's face it, a lot of these guys have never done any remediation work ever. When you have a loss, no matter what it is, if you feel that there are contaminants in that water, you have a responsibility to protect your workers. You have a responsibility to protect that homeowner, okay? If there's a question, test. Take a surface sample. Send it to a lab. Get your results. Know what it is you're working with, all right? We have a saying here, don't guess, test, because that's what covers you. And when an adjuster tells you, well, I've been doing this for years. I don't think that's contaminated. I don't think you need PPE. Remember something. He's not the one that's going to pay the fines when you get uh, charged from OSHA for not complying with the 1926 standard. Okay? He's not the one that's going to get a lawsuit if one of your workers ends up with a disease, with hantavirus or histoplasma or anything like that. So when they're telling you that, oh, this is a clean water source, this came from, you know, a, a sink. All right, you're right. But it's not where it came from. It's where it went. So regardless of what the category is from where it originated, what is the category of water when you're cleaning it up? What is the category of water when you're removing those materials? Because you could take a, a perfectly clean uh, five-gallon jug of spring water, and I could pour it through a wall cavity that has mice in it, and it's going to flow over, you know, mouse waste and insulation and whatever else might be in that wall cavity. And by the time it comes out, it's no longer cat one. You're looking at straight cat three contaminated water. And if you send your workers in without the proper PPE and you don't do the proper containment and you don't set up negative air and you don't do everything in your power to protect your workers, then you're at fault. And no insurance company, no carrier has the right to tell you that you should not provide a safe working environment for your employees. That's what OSHA is for. So don't back down. Stand up. Know the laws. Know what you're doing. Do your research. Get educated. And stand firm. Okay? Test, get your results, and it's an open and shut case at that point. Within the next week or two, we're going to be showing you how to do testing on affected material to prove what the S500 category should be and how you should be billing and how you should be protecting your workers and your clients from exposure. And remember, insurance companies don't have the last word. They have a policy that's a written contract. If that policy doesn't tell you what they don't cover, then they have to cover it. All right? Stand up for yourself. Stand up for your homeowners. Ask, your, ask the adjuster, where does it state in the policy that you don't pay for PPE for workers? Where does it state in the policy that you don't pay for hazard testing 
All right. As a general rule, you should be doing a hazard assessment prior to any remediation project. When you get audited by OSHA, that's one of the first things they're going to ask for. Right? Where is your hazard assessment? So don't let anybody tell you how to do your job. You're a professional. You're trained. You're certified. You're educated. And you're licensed. You have a responsibility. Don't allow them to dictate how you do your job to save them literally pennies on the dollar. All right? Stand firm, stand fast, and stay tuned.